Hey everybody, it's Lana and it's Rhonda. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little slow. Find her. <laughs> and welcome to Smile Girl. Don't be nervous. Um, we appreciate you being here, especially for our first introduction. <laughs> Okay, so you all saw the trailer, you all know what you was getting into, but this is who we are. And here we're at. So <laughs> thanks for being here with us today. Um, once again, I'm Juana. And I'm Esperanza. And um, I'm the mom. I'm the daughter. <laughs> if you can tell, we're identical. <laughs> yeah, so um, this podcast is specifically for open minds to think about different perspectives and present various sides of an issue. Um, we will have lots of trigger warnings and advisories um, in these episodes. Um, lots of swearing, because that's just who we are. Kind of who we are. We're pretty. Although, and I was totally going to look this up, but because I wasn't going to have a study on this episode, but I was going to look up a study that showed that people that swear are, are more genuine, mm -hmm. straightforward, loyal people. And um, we're rat or dies. We definitely are some red eyes. So, um, we are also going to be talking about some explicit topics like sex, drug, suicide, and toxic relationships. Um, so, every episode that we will do needs is explicit in every way. So, just be aware um, if you are a youngin, like 13 and up, please, 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 please reach out to somebody that you trust in order to have these. Um, real in-depth situations or if you want to disclose anything um reach out to us um mm -hmm. and we will definitely be there for you um in as many capacities as we can um the other disclaimer that we have to do is our thoughts are the views of the author and are in no way affiliated with the books or the authors or the, the publishing companies that we will be covering so our thoughts are specifically our own we don't have the buy-in from any of the authors or any of the publishing companies or anything. These are specifically just ours. Just ours. So um, the other big thing that we do have to mention is we will have spoiler alerts. So um, this first series that we will be covering is the House of Night series, and we'll go into that a little bit more. Um, but um, I will definitely mention the quote and what book it's from um, before launching into a discussion. So. Um, this series has like 17 books, I think, all together in the yeah. series. Um, so we'll definitely be telling where, where the quote's from. Um, and we will also do, once again, a spoiler alert on every single episode because um, some of the things that we'll be talking about will be in further books that we need to reference for this particular quote and mm -hmm. how the characters like develop throughout the series. So. Just some spoiler alerts, so if you haven't read through the House of Night series or you want to and you don't want spoiler alerts, pause. Come back. And then come back. <laughs> so we want to talk about um, how we came up with the name of the podcast. So I'll leave that to you. <laughs> um, okay, so... Because that was all you. <laughs> yeah, that <no. laughs> um, Okay, so we were sitting in our apartment... Um, Behind Peaches. Remember behind Peaches? No, we not? We, no, we were at the concrete store. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, and Got we, all kinds of blurs together. So yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we were sitting at the table, and we were talking about how to start this and what we were gonna do. Um, and you oh, were like, thanks. "Well, we need a name." I was like, "Yeah, let's start with the basics." Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, "The fuck? I don't know." Like. <laughs> And then we just started kind of like just joking around like we normally do. And I was like, Smile, don't be nervous. And then I was like, wait. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's kind of perfect. Right? Because um, we were talking about like favorite movies, and favorite music, and yeah. artists, and like what lines do we use? Yeah. Like, and we use Smile, but don't be nervous all the time. A lot. Like, whenever we're like getting ready to go into like some hard shit. Yeah, we're like, get it, girl. Yeah. Smile, don't be nervous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> slap each other. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Get the fuck out of each other. Yeah. Um. So that line originally comes from Bring It On, Bring Fight, it on to the Fight to the Finish. Yes, with uh, Christina Milian. Um, we love her heart. <laughs> heart. <laughs> you speak 
speak it, I am now. Oh, yes. Oh, oh my God. God, you speak I am? <laughs> Anyways. That's a different video, the way. <laughs> this is a different video, the movie. We watch those movies a lot, if you can't tell. Um, but um, in that particular scene. Count your blessings, white girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other one. That's the same one. Um, so... Um, in this particular scene that, that we got this quote from, um, Sky, who is the white girl that lives in Malibu, mm-hmm. uh, with her dad, um, who married Christina Leon's mom. Um, so, so they kind of just joined their family. Right. So now they live in Malibu. Yep. And they're going to like this rich white school. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's practicing her routine yeah in the middle of the hallway and the jaguars who are an all-star team who actually go to the same school um but they are they combined for the school right so it's it's kind of weird um how it's all divvied up but sky is practicing she's an actual cheerleader for the school mm-hmm. um and, and the school's trying to become an all-star squad um uh, christina Milian squad yes yes it's trying to do an all-star squad yes um because they want the bracelets yeah. I know you stole it. I know you did. <laughs> Anyways. You probably <laughs> I know you did. Um, so um she's Sky's practicing her routine. Um, Avery, who's the leader of the All Stars team, comes up and starts talking masa to her. Uh Christina Million comes up and you know, they do like their, you know, face off thing that they always do in the bringing out movies. Um and so Christina Million and Trey Bonetta. Um Trey Bonetta. Hey, I'm Trey Bonetta. Um This is not nice. <laughs> <laughs> sweet. Um so they um start talking to Sky about, you know, like we need to do an all-star team and so that they can be Avery and so everybody's like, Yeah, okay, okay. Well Sky is still like <laughs> <laughs> super scared. Um, and so Trayvon Ennis says, come on, girl, don't be nervous. And that's just what we say to each other now uh, when we're getting ready to go into some crazy, scary situations. So um, the reason why that's applicable to this particular podcast is because we've been through some shit. We've been, yeah, we had quite the scenarios to go through. Um, and we want to use those scenarios to help you all. Um, and every time we go through these scenarios or come across a new scenario or whatever may have you like of course you're terrified right because you don't know like what to expect or anything like that so smiling girl don't be nervous is like just how to get through it all um so this journey um started about 10 years ago <laughs> uh, I think it's more than that. uh no because it was in uh, 2013. 2010. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, where are we at? So, we're at 23. So, 20, math. math is hard. Okay. 13. <laughs> no, we're 23. You're right. Okay. <laughs> it Math. So, sorry. <laughs> 10 plus 13 is 23. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, a couple of years ago, um, I, oh, wait. I was wanting to, yeah, so it's, it's been 23. Yeah. Right? Okay. You said 10. I know. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Anyways, um, a couple of years ago, um, I was wanting to write a book um, during, like, COVID time. Mm-hmm. Like, like right when COVID hit it. So about March. Um, so, uh, like, 2020. Yeah. And um, my thought was kind of along the lines of, like, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Um, but my wanted mine to be, like you know, the older generation, like grandma's grandpa's to tell me their stories about like how we should be living as a younger generation. Mm -hmm. And that didn't kick off. um, But I started doing research about the authors. Um, And the authors of the Chicken Soul, um, Chicken Soup for the Soul books, um, wrote a book called The Aladdin Factor. Um, And in that book, it says you can't ask for what you want unless you know what you want. So the assignment was to create a list of 100 wishes. Or a hundred wants. Mm-hmm. So because I'm extra, um, I created a wish book, yeah. <laughs> uh, complete with pictures and illustrations and all kinds of things. Um, so I hit up Facebook and asked if uh, anybody had any magazines or newspapers or books or anything that they wanted to get rid of, so that I could create my wish book. Magazines everywhere. I <laughs> 
for a, forever. I mean, it went on for like a few months. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, because I didn't know what I wanted, you know? I was just so like. I was just trying to eat in this like tiny little corner of the table. <laughs> Rest his magazines. I'm like, anyway, excuse me. got stacks me. here and there. Yeah. And <laughs> so annoying. And um, it was it was because I didn't know what it, like I'd come to this point in my life where, you know, the kids were old enough that I didn't have to like really focus on them a whole lot. Um, so I was like, what what do I want like for me like as a mom? Um, so I started going through that. Um, and then okay, so we're gonna tell some different stories here, and I promise they all connect. So I just yeah. need you to stay with me. <laughs> so back before that, in 2000, so I was like 19. Um, I was with my ex fiance Casey, um, and, him. and he, we, we heard him so much, <laughs> um, and um, he had recommended the House of Night series, so marked um, by PC and Kristen Cast. He was like, well, are you going to read this series? It's really good. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, and of course, because I loved him so much, I was like, okay, so I got to read this. I got to carve out time between two jobs in school to like read this book, and I fell in love with it. Um, but I couldn't make it past book two because at that point I was doing two jobs. I was working for the state as a family assistance worker for DFS, uh, Department of Family Services, and then I was serving um, overnight for Sherry's as a server. And then I was in school for like, I think I was like either part-time or, or three-quarters time, not really sure. But um, so I stopped reading that. Um, and then I didn't pick it back up again until we moved to Laramie, mm-hmm. which was about 2010, um, and I'm totally going to date myself here, but um, I was working for Wyoming Independent Living and Rehabilitation at that time um, in Laramie as an independent living and visually impaired specialist. Um, so I had two programs, and I, I covered all of Carbon County in Wyoming. Now, if you know Wyoming, in Carbon Albany. Ca- in, yeah, I did uh, a vision uh, assistance in Albany County too, yeah. um, but independent living and vision assistance in Albany or er, in Carbon County. Both of, I have both those programs in Carbon County. Uh, are you quiet? I am quiet. It's so sad. I know. It's not that sad. I know. <laughs> I'm a big little bitch. Fuck. <laughs> Um, so I, so those of you that know Carbon County, um, it's a big county. It's huge, like lots of miles. And one of the, the towns in Carbon County is Bags and you have to go through like Sweetwater County in order to come down to Carbon County and Sweetwater County is like, um, Green, Green River, Rock Springs, um, that kind of, so like that kind of state, like literally bordering Utah. Okay, that's like Sweetwater County. So you had to like cut into Sweetwater to come down to um, Bags, and Bags is literally like five miles away from the Colorado border. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean like it's a huge area. So while I was covering that area, I was listening to this series on CD Mm -hmm. um, in my little Kia car. Love her. Sadly, she blew up. Sadly, she did blow up. Because um, <laughs> I was irresponsible. Um, anyway, so I stopped doing that um, because um, my, that job ended, um, and then I was working for the eye clinic, and so then I was traveling back and forth to Cheyenne to be trained to open up the new Laramie Vision, Vision Clinic. clinic. Love um, it. In Laramie, yes, we love them. We love you all. Um, However, sadly, that one burned down. Yeah, and then that one burned down. Oh, that was such a big mess. So, anyways, there's 17 in the original series, including the, the novellas, and then there's an, an additional four in the Other World series that comes after that first original series. And then there's a year space between the original series and then those four. So there's So there's 22 books total in this series, including the novellas. And the other world. And the other world series. Um, and then they also have like additional stuff, like they have the comic books, and they have the tarot cards, and then they have like the uh, fledgling handbook, handbook. which yep. is like the book that they use as their school book in the House of Night. So this is a real in-depth series, um, and so we're going to spend quite a bit of time on this. Um, 
So while I was working in Laramie, I was working with a coworker named Leslie Caps, and okay. she is amazing. She's sweet. Um, and at that point in time, I didn't realize like how much of an impact she would have on our lives. She already had quite a bit of impact on our lives when we were in Laramie because she was like my co-parent. Yeah. <laughs> Right? So here I am, single mom in Laramie. We literally moved for this particular job. We didn't know anybody in Laramie. Um, it was literally just me, Street. my son, and my daughter. And that was it. And Anthony, so you were in like kindergarten. Yeah. Um, and so Anthony was in like first grade. Second. Second grade. So, I mean, like they're teeny tiny and we're moving to this place. We don't know anybody. We have never left Cheyenne before. All of our family and friends have been in Cheyenne, born and raised in Cheyenne, and then all of a sudden we're like in Laramie. So Leslie became like a second mom to the kids, mm -hmm. and she would check on the kids when I was traveling um, because it was just single mom. You know the single mom struggles. If you're there, you totally get it. Um, so fast forward to like 2021, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, and I am starting to work through some past trauma because um, Esperanza wanted to, um, she was working on some school projects. Okay, first of all, why do you say my name like that? I never, <laughs> okay, because I never say your name. <laughs> it's weird, and I don't like it. <laughs> okay, so let me just clarify a couple of things. So her real name is Esperanza, okay? Yeah. Um... But she goes, she, she, we call her mama. I have a lot of nicknames. <laughs> hey, bitch, we <laughs> work. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> What's up? Um, so I call her mama because if you're from the Hispanic culture, you know every little girl is called mama or little mm -hmm. mama. Um, and every little boy is called Bubba. Um, so I call her mama. Um, so if I am talking to her and you hear me say mama, I'm talking about her. <laughs> Um, but she also goes by Espy and Espresso and there's so many Esperance other things. Hole. <laughs> God. So Empanada. Right? Empanada. That was something that I was thinking of. Um, so Mama is in school mm -hmm. and um, she has some school projects for sociology that so she's So this was my through. junior year. Yes. Um, I was in sociology. Yep. I can't remember her name. Miss Struby. Okay, yeah, she was super accommodating for everything that we had going on at that point. Yeah. Right? Um. So I was going through all my all my health shit, and I was having my wisdom teeth and tonsil surgeries, and then you had the emergency surgery yeah. and uh, all of my things. Um. And she's so sweet. And so some of the assignments that we had to do towards the end. This was towards the end of my junior year. Right. Um, right before I dropped out of public school. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one of our, two of our assignments was a family tree. Right. And the Trail of Tears. So the Trail of Tears came up because... Of the family tree. Of the family tree. Yes. Yep. Um, because... We don't know much about my family. Um, well, I don't know much about my family. Um, our family's very hush hush. Um, yes. And so we just, everything's a question and nobody knows shit. Yeah. And so I like, tried to put together a family tree. I was like, they're like, what's your grandma's maiden name? What the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got four different last names in this one family. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and a lot of that was because of how I grew up, and so I didn't want the kids to experience a whole lot of that. Um, so it was a blessing in disguise that we moved to Laramie, mm -hmm. um, and then have continued on and haven't gone back. So um, the kids didn't really know about like their genealogy and like where they came from and that kind of thing, and so that started the questions on you know like who's you know my great grandma and you know like well what's her background and that kind of thing and so that and 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 your 16th birthday party your yep. 16th birthday party was shortly after that during all of that um yeah because that was may mm -hmm. so 
um, it was all together. So then my brother came up to help with the party. Um, and so then she started asking us questions together. And then we started processing through some trauma that we ex experienced like in our childhood and found out we had each other's missing pieces, but we'll go into that later. Um, so through all of that, um, Leslie, the one that I'd worked with in Laramie, because we were in Casper by this time, yeah. um, was trying to launch a life coaching company, um, and um, she is no longer doing life coaching, but she is doing uh, a company called Wild Woman Marketing. She's on Facebook. Go look her up. She's amazing. Um, all things social and doing pitches, and she... Um, last I saw she was doing like a speaker at like a huge conference so like I mean she's amazing um, but she was helping me work through some trauma when she was helping me with some life coaching and um, I had brought me back to this particular book called Burned in the House of Night series and in this series spoiler alert yep. um, big spoiler alert in this particular um, book um, Zoe's been shattered uh, which means her soul has gone to the other world. Um, and so she's trying to figure out how to piece herself back together in order to be like whole again and come back to life. She's not technically dead, but her soul is not in her body in the real world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so her soul's just like being crazy in the other world. Um, and then she figures out that she has to piece herself back together. And I was like, oh man, like I need to read this book to figure out how she does that. Cause I felt like I had gone through so much that you were shattered. I was in pieces. I really was like, mm -hmm. there is like different roles that I had placed on myself. And so I just jump into this role and jump into that role. And I wasn't like one person. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, let me like run through and see like, you know, how she does it. How does she piece herself together? Maybe that'll give me like some answers as to how to do it myself. <laughs> Bless your face. Allergies are crazy Ooh. these last couple of days. And so if we're dying, we're okay. We're okay. Oh, we just okay. need to, you know, stop being mucosa for a second, but we'll be okay. Shit. Promise, promise. Um, so I had gotten quite a bit of answers from Burned um, about how to piece myself together. Um, and so there were some quotes that I pulled out of that particular book that really helped me learn how to do that. And get back together. Um, and get back together. And I was like, man, so like if there's so many like good quotes that I'm getting out of that book, what did I miss out of the rest of the series? Yeah. <laughs> right? So I started reading through the series again, um, especially since it was in it was a goal in my wish book mm -hmm. to read through That's all awesome. of those. Um, so then I started writing down. Oh my goodness. Um, man, do you need like a tissue or something? It's fucking up my eyelashes. <laughs> Fuck. So, um, started reading through the series and started like getting quotes and writing them down. Right. Cause I was like, man, like these are some great quotes. Like, and they were helping with what you were going on no. at the time. Well, I mean. <laughs> I'm like bawling in the living room. She's like, I got a quote for you, <laughs> bitch. I'm like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Like, there's this quote that I really think could help you. <laughs> I wanted to fucking stab you every time. <laughs> but they were helpful. They no, were helpful. I was not listening to <laughs> you at that point anymore. Um, so I would share them with as many people as I could. Um, and then once mama calmed down to actually listen to the quote that I was telling her, um, I mean, the, yeah, they definitely helped. And so I was like, man, like, why can't we do something with that? Right? Like if it helped her and it helped me, like, is it going to help anybody else? Like, let's, let's see what they could do. Um, so then I had to go back and read through them all because I had the quotes, but I didn't have like the context around them. So I literally have read this series like eight twice times. <laughs> twice in the last two years <laughs> um so i mean running through these books um so just a little bit about me personally um 
I am a single mom, have been a single mom their whole lives. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony just turned 20, mm -hmm. like last month. Yeah. Holy shit, it's I been a know, month. I know, right? Um, and then Mama turned 18 in May. Um, so, been a single parent since pregnancy. Um, I have a um, an associate's in sociology from LCCC. I have a bachelor's in psychology from uh, the University of Wyoming. Um, and then wanted to be an attorney, so I took the LSATs, but um, had some family drama come up. So we had to leave suddenly, we had to leave Laramie suddenly to move to Casper. Um, and the closest thing Casper had was a paralegal school. Um, so I did, I did my post bachelor's certificate in paralegal studies from Casper College. Um, I did as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We couldn't see our dining room table, which is very similar to this one, for months. I think, um, I just had to take requirements, so I think it was like 15 months, um, but uh, I just had to take the core classes since yeah. I already had my bachelor's degree. Um, so it was just those legal classes, and it was like one right after the other after another. And if you've ever been to paralegal school or you know a paralegal, it's all paper. It's all paper. It's all you just learn how to do paperwork, and it's like I thought I was good at paperwork, but not until paralegal school. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I do have that um, experience. Um, the kids and I have, they have grown up and we've had psychological discussions, you know, um, thinking outside the box, um, stepping out of the problem to see things in a different way. Um, we will periodically have guest speakers. Um, and our first guest speaker will be episode five, I believe, and that is going to be my foster mom. Oh, oh my nana. <laughs> Um, so super excited about that. Um, but the biggest thing that um, I went, well, actually, before we go into that, I want to talk I just about like broke my knee. You, you rice crispy today? I am. I <laughs> Jesus. Um, so before we get into that, um, I'm gonna have Mama talk about her perspective and what she brings to this. All right, so a huge thing nowadays is knowing what generation you're from. Um, because I feel like that's how we start separating people. Gen X! I knew you were Gen X. We were talking about that at work the other day. And I was like, because they were like, you're about the millennial. I was like, no, she's not. No. And they're like, yeah, she is. I was like, bro, she's older than you guys think she is. <laughs> she's like, she's like, what, 38? I was like, try to 42. <laughs> yeah, little laugh. Little laugh. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm Gen Z. Um, unfortunately, I'm an old soul though. I feel like. Yeah. Well, I think you've grown up around adults your whole life, so. I've always had to be an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am 18. Um, so okay, so I've not read it. the House of Night series. I got halfway through the first book. Listening. Just List. I listened to this one. Um, and just couldn't, couldn't do it. Um, I also have a convergency issue with my eyes, um, where I, my eyes don't follow and my lines move. So hard reading is hard for me. Um, and yeah, so I just never read the books. I also tried to do, um, a book report for my senior year in English, um, Ended up cheating my way through that. Don't do that, kids. Not helpful. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Um, still can't tell you how to do a book report, and I did then my freshman year and my senior year. Cheating my way through both of those. <laughs> Don't do it, kids. <laughs> um, so I haven't read any of the books. I got halfway through the first one, and that's about it. Um, I also just graduated this year. Woo -woo. <laughs> Kelly Walsh. From high school. <laughs> um, at Kelly Walsh. Um, social media is a huge thing in my life. Um, I am constantly surrounded by it, whether that's Snapchat, texting, um, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok um, Facebook, whatever. Constantly around it. Um, and I'm always thinking about it. It's always like, okay, what's my next post going to be? Um, 
So I lost my place. Future goals. Okay, so I am starting cosmetology this month. I'm so excited! <laughs> um, <laughs> That's the reason my hair. <laughs> yeah. So I started cosmetology school this month, um, and that has been a goal of mine since I was like a baby. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, we just came across that post, the toddlers. Toddlers and tiaras. Yeah. 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 So it's been about, I was, how old was I in that picture? I think you were like seven or eight I look really small so I'm thinking like five or six okay 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 Somewhere around there so it's been like 12 13 years that I've wanted to do this mm-hmm. um and the fact that it's happening this month is kind of fucking mind-blowing to me and I'm terrified and makeup artist right yep yeah. so makeup artist is gonna be a huge thing aesthetics um fallback plan is gonna be hair um but main thing is definitely gonna be makeup yeah yeah, yeah. So you really were like, I'm totally going to do this um, because Mariana. Yep. So my god sister is also a cosmetologist and she did makeup for the Grammys. Um, right. So she went to school, she went to cosmetology school in, in Riverside, California. Riverside, California. Mm-hmm. And one of their, their places that they got to go was to do makeup for the Grammys. And, and that's been a dream of mine. <laughs> yeah, and she posted, I'm like, oh my god, mama, look, look, look. Yeah. Mariana was at the Grammys, like. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Mariana has been like a biggest inspiration in my life for a long forever. time. Yeah, like since you've known her, mm-hmm. which has been like your whole life. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I've always just wanted to follow in her steps, and um. So yeah. Yeah. And her cousin Brianna. Brianna is a model for. Um, IMG. I IMG believe, and, and National sh- Models. Yep. And Marisa's. And yeah, so Marisa's is one of the companies that she models for. Yes. Um, yes. If you look in Marisa's, you can see her everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so and uh, we are working on getting her to talk as well. Yes. But we'll definitely have her mom. Oh, I'm so fucking nervous. For that. <laughs> um, so I, those two people have been really big models in my life. Um, another future goal is modeling for me. Um, that's been a work in progress for about three years now. Mm-hmm. Um, Seriously, for three years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of died down for a little bit right now, um, just because I'm trying to get into school um, and trying to get my life together. It's hard. Um, adulting is hard. Adulting is hard. <laughs> um, but also fun. So, um, but yeah. All right. So the family dynamics that we have, um, we are obviously bringing um, someone who's read the books, and someone who hasn't, someone who has been through, you know, being shattered to somebody who hasn't, um, it, as well, true. in different ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we're obviously a mother-daughter relationship. As you see, we don't have the normal mother and daughter relationship that you normally see. Um, we have logical arguments and, you know, some, some parenting. I parent very differently, and a lot of people don't understand that. Um, that has ruined some relationships um, yeah. and and that's okay um, because it's just a it's just a different view of parenting right like and there's lots of stuff that's happened behind closed doors that nobody sees in order for us to be the mother-daughter relationship that we're right, right now right, right 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 so for an example um, they have had to do logical parenting um, mm-hmm. and so because I, you know, have wanted to be an attorney for so very long, um, like I have taught the kids, like, you need to give me an argument for things, mm-hmm. right? Like you have to present your case. So, uh, one example would be, um, if they wanted to, cause they have friends all over, they were involved in all the things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we had band. Um, taekwondo choir a very 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 brief stint in theater um football one practice (laughs) um football cheerleading dance uh, yep dance uh Uh, anthony was in band Mm -hmm. um pure like a brief stint in orchestra uh, yeah, that didn't last long. Yeah, um, I mean, like, man, we was we was running. I and was then, in judo. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did judo. We were going to the gym. Mm -hmm. um, and so they had friends. They were doing all the things. We were going everywhere. I was a manager at a company at that point in time. And so, I mean, it was a lot. I, I look back now and I'm like, how the fuck did I do all of that and be everywhere and do all the things and still like transport and run a store and you know like I don't uh, it was I, I don't know I don't know I and like, doing school doing paralegal school in the middle of all that too so I feel like those times really like flew together <laughs> like they just like kind of like blurred together um between middle school or elementary school and junior high and then moving because of the marriage and then coming back five months later right um so like those like five years just gone yeah yeah all together I just, plus we were super involved in the school so we went yeah. to every you know parent teacher conference and anytime there was something at the school we were there like Super involved. I was getting in trouble. Super yeah, you got busted um, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So I had to be at the school there. And Anthony and started getting get in, in trouble, trouble. So I had to be there. Like, it was just... Yeah. It was, it was a lot. Anthony and started getting in trouble. trouble. But, um... So, they... So, they if they wanted to go, like, to a friend's house and they didn't have chores done. We had to come up with why. Right. So, the argument was like, okay, like... Um, I know I don't have my chores done, but I want to go stay at KK's house, um, and, you know, like, I'll do this much before, I'll do this much after, um, I'll be home at this time, I'll be home at this time, my grades are good, you know, I've done extra assignments at school, like, they had to give me a reason as to why, yep. um, they could go, even and though, and sometimes it didn't work, done. yeah, and sometimes it didn't work, and sometimes it did. Sometimes it did. So it, it was just, uh, it was fully depending on what their argument was because they had to present their case. And you only had one shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't come back. Yeah. And be like, oh, well, okay. So I thought about it. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm not. <laughs> you already presented. <laughs> you did your case. Like, that was it. That's all. So um, that was um, just a small example of how they grew up. So it's very argument presented. Um, if you've got a stance, own it, kind of thing. So um, they, that's the kind of relationship that we have. And I have to do the same with them, too. Yep. Um, you know, so it's not just one-sided. So that's what we bring to this. So, oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're okay. What's one thing that, like, you, like, have, like, presented a case to us? Okay, so um, I was like, oh, my God, when, when did I do that? Um, and I said, I was like, no, wait, have I? And then I was like, no, wait, yeah, I have. So when I went to weight loss surgery, mm -hmm. um, I was like, hey guys, like this is really going to impact like not just me, but like the whole family. So, you know, we have to change the way we eat and what we're doing for physical activity. And, you know, I'm really gonna need you to be patient because I'm gonna need to do some rehabilitation after surgery and I'm gonna be down and I'm gonna need you guys to step it up, but it's only gonna be like for a short period of time. and. Like, I don't want to go through this alone. alone, and I want you guys to be with me and fully support it because I don't want to have to fight my kids. While fighting your body. While fighting my body and trying to do all this, and that was a big thing because at that point I was 306, yeah. right? So that was that was the argument. And if you guys, if any one of you would have said no, you wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it. I feel like, okay, so I was there when you had your surgery. And, and I, afterwards. And, af and after. She was so traumatized. I was traumatized. I'm still traumatized. Me too. <laughs> fuck. I beat the fuck out of Jen. <laughs> I feel so bad to this day. Um, But I don't remember where the fuck Anthony was. He was with Jen. He was with, you guys were both with Jen. So at the hospital when you were having your surgery, it was just me and Jen and Callan. Yes. But he wanted to stay home because he didn't want to see all that. Yeah. I think he just, he wanted you to have the surgery. Yes. But he didn't want to be there at the hospital. Right. And I did. Right. And I. That's the difference between herself. you and Anthony. Like, Anthony's like, yeah, she's going to do her thing, but I can't see her do all the things. Yeah. Like, he is very hands off, but. I was there. You better be there afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, 
You okay? Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. And I was like... <laughs> and then she fucking... Oh. <laughs> yeah, I so... I the fuck out of Jen and I feel awful. Yeah, so um, what she's talking about is right after surgery, um, I... Um, of course, you know, I had uh, the gastric bypass surgery, or not the gastric, I'm sorry, the gastric. vertical sleeve. Um, and so they took out part of my stomach um, as part of my weight loss surgery. And um, for some reason, I think it was the, um, the pain meds, um, it made me nauseous. And so when I got woken up and got taken to the room, I was okay. But once like, I started being aware, I started getting really nauseous. And so here I am with nothing in my stomach and I'm dry heaving right after I just had stomach surgery. So you can imagine how traumatized my body is. And I'm just throwing up blood because There's obviously they've done, you know, surgery on my stomach. And so um, mama was there and caught all of that and had to be taken out of the room and I just couldn't, it was so painful. Yeah. Um, but that, do not let that deter anything from weight loss surgery oriented because you do it again. I, I would do it again tomorrow, today, this afternoon. I'd be like, all right, I don't have to eat anything. All right, cool. Like, let me go in because yeah. it was so worth it. It was so worth it. Um, so I do it again in a heartbeat. So that was just a little traumatizing moment there for a second, but <laughs> we're like, we, we we're wrote good. it out. We wrote it out. It's so right. good. <laughs> Um, so that's what we bring to you uh, for this thing. Now, how all of this wraps up um, is a friend of mine, Shauna Frenicase. Um, she, I had talked to her. I had been working with her um, about her getting her companies up and running. So she mm -hmm. runs um, Underground Bull Riding Productions, um, Glamity Jane's Designs, and then, oh, which she makes cups, and you will see different cups and different shirts and stuff that I will definitely have on here uh, for future episodes. Um, and her sons um, run 5F Bucking Bulls. Um, and so they do uh, youth bull riding productions um, all throughout the U.S. Uh, right now we're focused in the Rocky Mountain region area. I am a board member, so I am totally busy with all of her stuff. Um, but was really working with her on getting her companies up and off the ground. Um, so she was like, well, you need to do the same thing too. And I'm like, no, I don't. What are you talking about? about? What are you talking about? Like, this is all about you, <laughs> right? Because that's what we do. So um, she really pushed me to start recording. Um, and that's just kind of how all of this came up. So um, in talking about all of this right before we had recorded, uh, I think time number three or four. Yeah, so we're on time five. So we're on time five, um, <laughs> and um, we have everything sorted out. It's going to be great. Um, but right before um, time three or four um, came, a friend of mine, a really close friend of mine, uh, was like, you just need to let the past go. Um, and I, I really didn't like how that settled with me, because I was like, no, like, I don't, like, your past makes you who you are, right? Like, going through all of those things make you who you are, but um the morning that we had recorded time three or four i don't even remember um i was listening to um a reading um and um he said you have to look at it like is your past working for you? like is it happening to you or is it happening for you mm -hmm. and as like you've seen in putting all these pieces together i fully believe that everything happened for me um, because I wouldn't be where I'm at had all of those things happened like were they like sucky in that moment like Absolutely. yeah it's oh man it sucked ass so bad mm -hmm. you know what I mean um, but would I change any bit of it absolutely not absolutely not because then we wouldn't be where we are we wouldn't have the lessons that we have you know that we could teach everybody else and bring everybody else into so um, so uh, going back, so that's how all of that it came to be, like lots of little things were in place that helped us be where we are now. So we will be covering the House of Night series first. Um, and like I said, there's a, quite a bit um, of quotes that came out of this book series. Um, the general overview, Zoe Redbird is the main character. She has her grandma. Grandma Redbird. Grandma, grandma Sylvia Redbird. Um, and she has her nerd herd, which consists of um, the four additional elements. Um, they are basically a vampire finishing school. Um, and she finds out that the high priestess of the House of Night Tulsa 
um, is working for the powers to be that are bad. So Neferet um, turns out to be not what everybody else is wanting her to be as a leader. And so she ends up going against um, the rest of the school in order to save the school as well as the, the rest of the house nights. It's freezing in here. Um, so that's the general overview. Um, so we're going to start with the House of Night series, and then we will review other books like Nora Roberts and B.C. Andrews, um, because they are also in my wish book. Um, we are also going to review other books by P.C. and Kristen Cass, the writers of the House of Night books. So that's where we're at. So before we end, I do want to give a huge shout out to Justin. Um, he, like without him, none of this would be possible. Um, he has invested in our technology and um, really sat down and <laughs> listened to numerous breakdowns um, and um, has given um, quite a bit of financial assistance in order for this to come through. He didn't want to be named, but we don't do that here. You know, we give thanks to everything and everybody who has allowed us to be here. So Justin Bragg, huge shout out to you. Hard <laughs> um, So. Um, we, um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, email or message on YouTube, we do have an email address, um, and that is smilegirldon'tbenervous at gmail.com. All of our socials. All are, of our socials are smilegirldon'tbenervous. Um, we, we got our Instagram up the other day. I'm still working Woo-hoo. on TikTok. Yeah, so we're good on TikTok, but we do I did have... figure it out, though. Nice! I just need to set it up. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we do have um, posts come in. We have lots of uh, book nerd bo- uh, book nerd quotes um, on our Facebook oh. page. Um, so come see us. You'll get um, updates as to what's going on in our lives, what's going on with the um, episodes, upcoming speakers, upcoming pictures, um, quizzes and stuff like that. So um, join us for our first quote from Mark um, on our next episode talking about the power in your uniqueness. Um, As always, like, comment, share, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time, kids. Bye. Bye!